There once was a striker and football manager who just couldn't help but develop into the ultimate bagsman. With his locks flowing in the wind and hailing from the land that brought us legendary strikers such as Hugo Sanchez, Salvador Reyes and Javier Hernandez, Carlos Fierro looks set to be the next in line for the throne. With an under-17s World Cup wrapped up in 2011, a Mexican Golden Age spearheaded by the great Carlos Fierro looked all but assured. And looking across at football manager, aged just 16 in game, Fierro looked like the hottest prospect in the world. Yet, present day, aged 28, Fierro is now a free agent. For a player that was meant to set the world alight, how is Carlos Fierro still uncapped for Mexico? For a player destined to cross the Atlantic Ocean and play for one of Europe's great clubs, how did Carlos Fierro never manage to leave North America? And for a player described by Bleach Report as being a natural number nine, end up being shunted to the wing because of a lack of goals. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of former football manager wonder kid, Carlos Eduardo Fierro Guerrero. To begin, it's important to look back at what made Carlos Fierro a football manager wonder kid in the first place. And the only place to start is at the 2011 FIFA Under 17s World Cup hosted in Fierro's native Mexico. Being part of the host nation saw Mexico being seeded into pot one in the tournament and they drew a group consisting of themselves, Congo, North Korea and the Netherlands. And they gave themselves a problematic start when they fell behind just three minutes in. However, this just allowed Fierro to start the comeback, capitalising on the defensive mix-up and prodding the ball home from close range. Mexico would go on to win their opening game by three goals to one, and the number nine would cement himself as Mexico's focal point. Mexico's next match would be against Congo, where a late winner would see them improve to two wins from two. Fierro would not provide any goal involvements, but did play the full 90 for the team. In Mexico's final group match, they took on the Netherlands, perceived to be their hardest opponents in the group. The Dutch had future stars including Memphis Depay and Nathan Ake as part of their squad. Nevertheless, Mexico were able to overcome them to make their group record a perfect one, with three wins from three games. As for Fierro, he turned goalscorer again, poaching home the second goal for Mexico in similar fashion to his first. This impressive form saw Mexico as the team to beat in the tournament and the next to face them in the round of 16 were underdogs Panama. And it was that man Fierro who opened the scoring with a cheeky near post header that set the hosts on their way to a 2-0 victory. This didn't tell the whole story though as on another day Fierro would have scored a stunning hat-trick had the two subsequent chances been finished ever so slightly better. This sent Mexico into the quarterfinals where they would find their toughest test yet, taking on France featuring the likes of Kurt Zuma, Imeric Laporte and Sebastian Haller. Nonetheless, all eyes remained on Carlos Fierro and for good reason too. He helped Mexico to the best possible start setting up teammate Escamilla for the opener. France were level within minutes however and the match was cagey as the clock ticked on. This continued until the masterful Fierro electrified the match, showcasing his sublime speed and instinctive finishing to send Mexico through to the last four. Germany was the team they had to face in the semi-final, and my word was this an entertaining game of football. Mexico led 1-0 early, only for Germany to flip it to 2-1. Mexico then found an equaliser to make it 2-2, and they won the game for an audacious overhead kick in the 90th minute. I'll link the highlights in the description of this video for those who want to watch this crazy, crazy game. Fierro's impact on this game wasn't as notable as the previous two rounds though, but he probably can be forgiven for having a bad game. This culminated in Mexico making the final then, facing a plucky Uruguay that had sent Brazil packing in the semis with a 3-0 demolition job. However, the number nine for Mexico was back, turning provider for the crucial opening goal with an unselfish header back across goal. The host would add a second late on to seal it and with that they were crowned under 17 world champions in front of just shy of 100,000 supporters. And more poignantly, that was the moment Carlos Fierro, the wonder kid, was born. With an under 17 world cup under his belt, Fierro looked every bit a future star and the ones always watching were the folks over at Football Manager. And in FM12, a 16 year old Mexican playing for Chivas with attributes this good was always going to be noticed. Following on from the Under-17 World Cup, Chivas had began using the youngster beginning in the 2011-12 season. However, the fearless number 9 who dominated on the international stage struggled to make an impact for his club side. He appeared 26 times in his first season, rarely playing the full 90, scoring just one goal. 
The following season was a similar story. 19 games played, just two goals and two assists to his name. But there were no calls for concern yet. At this time, Fierro was still a teenager, and although he may be struggling to provide goal involvements, he was getting minutes against big defenders in the Liga MX and playing in the CONCACAF Champions League. More importantly still, 2013 was a big year for youth tournaments for Mexico, with both the CONCACAF Under-20 Championships and the Under-20 World Cup rolling around. The first of these tournaments was the CONCACAF Under-20 Championships, which was also being hosted in Mexico. Fierro had been called up to play for the team, and there was expectation he could fire his nation to glory once again. However, this didn't turn out to be the case, at all. Mexico's opening game against Curacao saw Fierro benched, and didn't even appear as a substitute as they coasted to a 3-0 victory. In their second group game against El Salvador, Fierro again wasn't listed as a starter, however he did come on just after the hour mark, but he was unable to make an impact as Mexico qualified to the next round. Jamaica were their quarter-final opponent, and once again, Fierro was listed on the bench. He made a 17-minute cameo, but again Mexico were comfortable victors without him. The semi-finals came next, and a return to playing against El Salvador. In this game, he was limited to even fewer minutes, coming on for just three minutes. Again though, Mexico had found themselves in the final, taking on their rivals, the United States. The hosts defeated them with two goals in extra time to seal a 3-1 victory and win yet another youth tournament. However, Fierro wasn't even called upon in the final. He sat and watched his teammates win, but this time without his help. Any shot of redemption for the Chivas Starla in the Under-20 World Cup proved futile too, with Mexico opting to leave Carlos Fierro out of their squad. He could perhaps take some solace in that Mexico performed terribly in the tournament and were dumped out in the round of 16 by Spain. Nevertheless, the Mexico youth setup that was so dependent on Fierro and his goals in 2011 progressed without him just two years later. Again, it cannot be understated here that Fierro was still a teenager and although his progress may have been slow following his explosive introduction, you couldn't count him out just yet. And back at his club Chivas, there was a grand feeling amongst his coaches that this perfect number 9, as described by the Bleacher Report, may actually be better as playing in the wide positions. Thus, over the next two seasons, it was rare to see Fierro deployed as a centre forward. Yet still the goals and assists were not forthcoming. Fierro had a reputation for working hard and being a decent squad option, but failed to make his mark at Chivas as first hopes. Five years on from his Chivas debut, Fierro hadn't really been making much more of an impact. He himself said to ESPN that you always miss scoring goals. I'd like to score more, but I've been playing on the wing. Perhaps showing a few signs of discontentment and not playing in his natural position. Three months after that interview in January 2016, Fierro found himself loaned out to fellow Liga MX side Geletelo with an option to purchase the player in the summer. Any hope of a revival for Carlos Fierro wasn't forthcoming though, as he was used sparingly and a similar story emerged with him only managing to score two goals in his time at the club. Unsurprisingly, the club did not choose to sign him. Yet internationally for Mexico, Carlos Fierro found himself quite remarkably back in the picture. With the Olympics rolling around in 2016, rules in place are that nations must be made up entirely of under 23 players, apart from three exceptions. Also, the manager of the Mexico Under-17s that had won them the World Cup was now the manager of the Mexico Under-23s. Thus, everything seems to be falling into place for Carlos. A friendly in March 2016 versus Portugal Under-23s saw Fierro back in the starting lineup internationally and playing as the number nine. Portugal ran out 4-0 winners, but Fierro had played the full 90 and therefore was clearly a contender in the squad. More friendlies followed and Fierro was getting minutes in the tank and engrossing himself within the setup. Things looked good for Fierro's chances, and in the final two friendly matches, he elevated his claim even further by scoring two goals in two games against Mali and Bulgaria, respectively. So yes, whilst Fierro had been struggling domestically, he had begun to find some form internationally again. Under his former coach, who had previously got the best out of him, it seems inevitable that not only would Carlos Fierro be called up to the Olympic squad, he would also be their starting number nine. There was just one slight problem with that though. They didn't call him up. And to be honest, no one quite knows why. As mentioned, he was a favourite with the manager, he had been featured heavily with the under-23s before the tournament and was even scoring goals. Yet he was not selected and would miss out on the tournament. Or would he? Two matches into the tournament and Mexico sat in second in the group with a win and a draw. Unfortunately for them, striker Orebi Peralta had picked up an injury in their victory over Fiji. 
stepped back into the fold, Carlos Fierro. He joined up with the Olympic team knowing a win or a draw would be enough to see themselves through into the next round. However, with the game poised in the balance at 0-0, Quan Chan Hoon scores a wonder goal which would send Mexico home if they couldn't find an equaliser. With 10 minutes left on the clock, Mexico turned to the man whose goals had fired them to an under-17s World Cup win. The very subject of this video, Carlos Fierro. Sadly for him, however, he failed to make an impact and Mexico crashed out of the Olympics and Carlos Fierro never played for his country at any level again. Following his poor couple of years featuring Olympic heartbreak, dwindling club form, his boyhood team Chivas wanting him gone and struggling whilst out on loan, it now seemed that the wonder kid talent of Carlos Fierro would remain unfulfilled. Soon after he left Chivas for $3 million to rivals Cruz Azul, yet a run of just one goal in 13 games saw him loaned out again to another side in the Liga MX, Marilia, where he failed to score in 22 matches. Another move came in 2019 for the now 24-year-old Fierro, which would see him finally leave Mexico. As a teenager, he was regularly linked with moves away from his home nation to the likes of England and Spain, yet it was MLS where his next club resided, at San Jose Earthquakes, where he had hoped a change of scenery would provide a change of results for his career. This, however, as we are now so familiar with in the case of Fierro's career, did not come to pass. Despite initial excitement, the Mexican only managed five goals in 51 games with his new club and now found himself exclusively playing on the wing. In 2021, San Jose Earthquakes decided to let him leave on a free and he returned to his native Mexico to play with Juarez, one of Liga MX's worst clubs. His misery here was compounded as over the last two seasons, Fierro has only featured in 10 matches, scoring just once. Which leads us to present day. Carlos Fierro is without a club and a teenager who looks set to become a Mexican hero remains uncapped and the chances of that changing now are incredibly slim. Yet this is not a video to mock Fierro for not reaching the heights others have believed he would hit. He can still boast being a bronze ball winner, as well as a world champion at under 17 level. He's played for many clubs in the Liga MX, including his boyhood one. He spent three seasons in the MLS and is an Olympic athlete. None of that can be taken away from him. And as a long time football manager player, we salute you Carlos as a cult hero forever. Thank you for watching.